Good morning, November the 21st, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Today is day number 27 in the week number 14. Okay, so let's get started for today. Welcome back to week number 14, day number 27 of CISG 114, Section 1. Today, when I check the schedule, with more than four speakers willing to make the speech of the semester. So I'm going to walk from the top to the bottom because we need to give priority to those who sign up first. Uh, the first one is Coco, I think. It's Coco. So K-O-K-O. -K -O. Coco, have you uploaded your PowerPoint yet? Is it in the very end or next to this? Let's double check. Okay, so that is Coco's PowerPoint. All right, so after Coco, it will be Alice, I think. So let's give the time to Coco, the 10 minutes of your speech. Uh, I'm going to open up your PowerPoint at this point. Okay. So Coco, there you go. Yes, let's see. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Apparently, you did not see anything, so I'm here. I'm coming on. Okay, thank you. You have two and minutes. Good morning. My name is Coco. I'm going to do my presentation about what I have learned in this semester. I don't actually know what this course is. I remember that I got lost in the first day because I don't know where is my classroom. After I arrived the classroom and listened to Professor Griffin about what this course is, I feel bored because it seems like there are many things to do in this course. It is the first time I know about what Inquiry-based learning is inquiry-based learning is widely recognized as a powerful way for learning about a subject domain, and more importantly, for learning how to learn, as it helps people to develop their independent learning skills. In inquiry-based learning, people bring to bear on the topic any existing knowledge or experience relevant to the issue. They carry out research and investigation into areas that they decide are essential for a proper response to the issue. In current based learning, the learning is self-directed because it is driven by students' own decisions about appropriate ways in which an issue or a scenario may be. In this, semester, in this semester, we did three learning contracts. In learning contract one, I have to finish proposal, peer discussion, individual journal, and PowerPoint by myself. I have many questions on this assignment mode because I don't know how to start my work. I'm going to ask Professor what I should include in the learning contract work. Eventually, I understand what I should do. My first topic is what is information privacy. The reason why I choose this topic is because I think the privacy of information is very important. Nowadays, many people like to upload their live photo into internet. They want to share their life with their friends. But those photos may include their personal information. It may still by some malicious third parties. In learning contract 2, I need to work with my partner to finish individual journal, pair discussion, pair proposal, pair proposal PowerPoint, 
individual reflective box and pair presentation voice record. This is a huge challenge to us. We need to put many effort and time on it to finish those assignments. I combine my topic with my partner's topic. My topic is what is photo sharing, and my partner's topic is what is tagging. The new topic after our discussion is how do we build up the relationship between photo sharing and tagging. We think that photo sharing and tagging are linked together and we are both interested in them. So they are combined into one topic that is our pair topic. How do we build up the relationship between photo sharing and tagging? Today, photo sharing dominates in social networking sites, and this is vital for our social life. People used to take a selfie when they are hanging out with friends, record down the food when having a meal in restaurants, and take a picture of of the site when traveling to different places. All these photos taken people would upload them on the internet and tagging is essential for people to describe the post. The relationship between photo sharing and tagging is similar to that between air conditioner and remote, as well as phone and charge, that they cannot work without each other. If we speak of photo, uh, if we speak of sharing photo, tagging will be the first thing comes to our mind. The use of tagging becomes more widely, and many people like to categorize their shared photo with keywords and thus attract others' attention. In learning contract three, I need to work with my team members. Our team had four people, including me. This time we have to finish learning journal, team discussion, team proposal, team report, and team PowerPoint. Our final topic is what is the impact of internet online? Both of us have different roles and I am the secretary at this team. First, I learned how to co cooperate with others through doing these assignments. Second, doing things by myself can help me become more active to learn. And this, and this is what I have learned in this semester. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. We thank you, Coco, for giving us a very nice and neat and concise presentation of her learning in this semester. We thank you very much. Okay, so let's move on to the second speaker of today. Uh, when I scroll down the list, the next speaker looks like it's um, after Coco on the 21st. It's, let's see. Looks like a CD. Let's, let's try to see. No, it's Terry first. Terry. Yeah, Terry, you're the second speaker before we get to Cindy. So I think Terry has already uploaded the PowerPoint. That, yes, the third person is Cindy, but Cindy is, has not arrived yet. So it's okay. Terry, you have all the time you need. And then it's Alice, and then it's Red John. So Terry, I've got your PowerPoint now. Thank you, Terry. Let me give you the mic. Yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry, and uh, I will talk about what have, what have I learned in this, this course. And what have I learned that um, I will just do the four parts. Uh, the first part is knowledge and uh, information. What have I learned from the of this course? And the second is the team project. 
in the front is the class sharing and presentation, and the last is the how to run this course. Mm, knowledge and information, and I, I have, and I learn from this course. Mm, I chose the free topic mm, from the chose the free topic to introduce mm, what is information technology and what is wiki and what is photo sharing. Mm. Uh, information technology is uh, application of computer and internet to source data, trans transmit and put data or information often in the context of uh, business or other enterprise. And the term is commonly used as a invent for computers and computer networks, but is also encompass other information distribution technologies such as the television and the telephone. Uh, what is wiki and wiki wiki startup? And uh, Wiki is a website that provides a collaborative and both multiplication of the, this context and structure directly from the web browser in a technical Wiki test is writing use a simplified, simplified uh, markup language and knows a Wiki markup and often with the help of a uh, rich test -ish. and and when talking about the wiki and we all know think of the wiki wiki uh, wiki wikipedia uh, wikipedia mm. the wikipedia is a be on online in in Wikipedia that by divide follows its user to add any article. Wikipedia is the large and the most popular journal reference work on the internet and is ranked among the ten most popular website. Wikipedia is uh, owned by uh, non profit and Wikipedia. Mm, what is photo sharing? Mm, and image sharing or photo sharing is uh, publishing a uh, transfer of a user digital photos online. Imagine sharing website offer a survive such as uploading, hosting, manage, managing, and sharing of photos mm, publicly or Sharing is a lot is not confused to the web and personal computers, but it's also pos uh, possible for um, portable um, devices uh, such as camera photos, either directly or well elements as some camera now come equipped with uh, wireless network and similar sharing from um, functionality and just mm. this, this is the uh, software of the uh, and and when we do the something con contract free we was uh, uh, and we choose the we, our group choose the big topic in the team project. Mm. Uh, the, the first one is the what is wiki, and second is what is pro, and the third is the uh, what is photo sharing. In our group makes the first topic in on, on into a uh, one topic, and how photo sharing in blogs and wiki influence our daily life. How photo sharing is bought and wiki influence our daily life. Box 
of that we can share our information or get useful information compared with the test pictures and more in thirty than than test. Therefore, we can use the less time to understand the information what um, we need. And I think the wiki and blogs are the familiar, familiar, familiar things for everyone in wiki and blogs. Uh, sometimes have some photos which can make us easier to get of the information. Mm. I, I learned the importance of, of, of the teamwork and the community with uh, team members and uh, telling them what, what are you doing and what, we, what you have to do and uh, share the journal and discuss and ex exchange the uh, information and idea with the board member and the team of the labor and uh, uh, yeah, it's a clear direction of the labor to improve effectiveness and my team and my group job is the timekeeper and I, my job is control the time to make the uh, group, uh, group project and do in the limited time. Mm sharing and presentation and during the time we did the report in every class we, we, we must choose a representative to uh, share what we have done and in the last last class and what, what we what will we do in the next, next class. In the 10, 10 minutes presentation we will show what we in the project and the way to learn this source and the uh, first one is writing the learning journal and with writing the learning, uh, learning journal can reduce the thing we learned last, last lesson mm. make a public online discussion and we can exchange the information with the classmate each other and uh, report and meet us very uh, report can show the so what what we have learned in the class and Sarah is also mm, thank you for your okay thank you Terry for giving us an um, interesting and concise introductions of your learning through this course okay the third student who is going to make the speech of the semester I think it's most likely Alice, but uh, because Cindy is not here yet. Uh, let's let's see. Okay. Thank you very much. So the third person I can see it's actually um, Cindy, but Cindy is still absent from the class now. So when we scroll down the list, it's Alice. And Alice has actually uploaded her PowerPoint. So we'll give the chance of time now to Alice. OK, thank you, Alice. It's your time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alice. And now I want to share my topic, what I have I learned this semester to you guys. Like everyone else, this is the first time I've been in networking for this semester. This is an area that is very relevant to our lives, but at the same time, it's very practical and technical. So this course is a big challenge for me. After learning a lot of lessons, I learned some basic knowledge of the network. I also learned the gnarly method, which is very helpful for, our, uh, for my other courses. And first, uh, I divided 
uh, what have I learned for four parts. The first part is the assignment. The second part is the three topics I learned. The third topic part is the presentation skills, and the last is teamwork spirit. First is how to do the assignment. Um, at first class, Dr. Bat um, tell us um, the, the course time management. Um, we should do six tasks per week, and we should pay uh, about six hours per week. And the first is readings, and, and then online learning journals, online discussion forums, online collaboration wikis, and report writing face-to-face -face meetings. And then it is extra curricular time schedule. Uh, from my perspective, we should do um, the most urgent tasks at first, and then um, is less urgent. <coughs> Less urgent things, and then as uh, everyone know that it's about six uh, task, an uh, online learning journal assignment, peer discussion forum assignment, peer proposal assignment, peer proposal PPT assignment, individual reflective block assignment, and peer presentation and Q and A voice record assignment. Then is the three topics I learned this semester. The, um, the first is what is the information privacy, and then is what is a wiki, and then is what is web 2.0. Uh, first is what is information privacy. The information privacy is privacy of personal information, and it, it refers to data privacy. It's important for information sharing and it applied to using various methods. Uh, here is the observation in, and interpretation. <coughs> uh, from my perspective, the information privacy is something that can only owned by ourselves. That means we have the own ownership of the information absolutely. It's our secret, so we do not need to share it to others. And sometimes it's not only our secret that easy. Sometimes it can connect our personal security. There is a, mm, and uh, the next is what is a wiki. Wiki is a web application, and also we can think it is a type of content management system. Wiki has implicated structure and it permits control and it serves many different proposals. proposals. And here is a, the observation. And um, we can know that um, it allows a users to edit almost any article. And Wikipedia is the largest and most popular general reference work on the internet and is ranked among the 10 most popular websites. And here is what is Web 2.0. Uh, I found a radio about it. services, 
and applications like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Wikipedia. In the business world, the Web 2.0 platform has created a stir of innovative activity. Many companies are scrambling to create an online experience for their customers and clients, and figuring out how to harness new technologies to expand their brands, products, and influence. If you'd like to learn more about Web 2.0, visit us at user-led content generated by the internet product model in order to distinguish the traditional site-generated, employee-generated content defined as the second generation of the internet. That is Web 2.0, it's a new era. And then is the presentation skills. First, we should review learning contract and it can help us to decide the presentation topic and the point. Then it's produced PowerPoint, and it can clear thinking of the learning. And then it's right presentation. Uh, and you should, or you can choose, you can do or not. And it can make our speech more fluid. And then it's teamwork spirit. Teamwork spirit is an important ability and skill in the 21st century because we are office with a globalization and the question of how to live better. Therefore, we must learn to work well in the team and let the team spirit guide us to success. And in our team, we have team leader. It's Pinto and Resource collector, time controller is Terry. And then my job is resource finder and communicator. And from my perspective, it's not only team leader to control our team. We should make our team better together. And uh, from the teamwork, we, uh, we can learn how to respect each other and how to help each other and how to listen to each other and uh, that can maximize the value of ourselves. And that's all, thank you for your listening. Thank you, thank you Alex for giving us your talk of the semester. Um, we appreciate your effort. It help us to understand more your perspective. It's very important that we got the perspective of our students in order to understand what we could do. Okay. Okay, the first person who's going to make a speech on this first day is Rina. Rina is here, so you're confirmed. And 
And then what we need to do is to confirm that if Rina, Rina has already uploaded PowerPoint and it is confirmed true. So Rina is the first speaker on this first day. And then after Rina, it's going to be CO, CO, Coco. Coco is not here today. Um, let's see. Coco is supposed to be the second speaker on this first day. And we just want to remind Coco that you need to upload your PowerPoint before this first day. So as to obtain your chance to make the speech. And the third person to make the speech is Tai Jai. Uh, he's the third person to make a speech, and he needs to upload his PowerPoint true. Now remember, no PowerPoint, no speech, okay? So the fourth person to make the speech is Selinda, okay? And actually she's put on the seventh because we picked her up again last time. So Selinda, you need to upload your PowerPoint before we can give you the chance to make a speech. And after that, I think it's Eretz. So Eretz is the fourth person uh, to make a speech. And Eretz, you also need to upload your PowerPoint. And after Eretz, it's Karen. So Karen, you're going to make a speech on first day. So you need to upload your PowerPoint true. And then it's, um, it's pretty much who, okay? Then let's have a check one more time. Yes. Tiffany is the person who's going to make the speech next. And so Tiffany, you need to upload your PowerPoint to get ready for your first day speech. And after that, it's supposed to be Leo, but Leo it's already moved on to next Monday because all the seven slots are full. So Neil is going to make the speech on Monday. So you need to upload your PowerPoint again. So then it's Erica. Erica, you are also moved to next Monday. So Erica, you need to upload your PowerPoint before next Monday. So having said that, uh, we are quite set for next Monday and the final class uh, next Thursday, okay? Next Thursday. No, uh, I, I don't think we have next Thursday, but uh, we should have at least one mega class, so we are going to confirm to next Monday, okay? Supposed to be the last class. Uh, if we do have a mega class, it will be next Thursday. It's supposed to be next Thursday, is the December the 1st the beginning day of your two-day study period. So most likely there is no mega class. Yet, remember, okay, your deadline to complete your learning portfolio for this course is December the 5th. Actually, the first day when you have write your final exam. I hope you do not need to do it until December the 5th. You can get everything done uh, before the end of December the 4th, okay? And let me tell you this important secret today, and for those of you who are here, you must listen with care. Um, I'm going to receive this question from one of you, and I'm ready to give you this secret. Now, you did three learning contracts, right? You submit three learning contracts, okay? In the past semester, this is what I did to encourage you. Um, each of the learning contract will give, will give you at most 10 semester part if you can earn the food, right? Right? You will understand that. Now, in order to encourage my student to go ahead to get your, the best possible grade, this is what I did in the last semester, and some of you know it, so you came to me last time. So let me tell you this. This is what I did, and this is a good thing as far as I believe. You will, you will receive full score Full score, remember, for one of the free learning contract, okay? For one of the free learning contract, under one simple condition, that you actually have submit your work for all the learning contract, okay? This is very important. If you have actually submit all the work for the free learning contract,
this is what everybody is supposed to have done, you will receive full score, 10 full semester points for one of the three learning contracts. Okay? And you are going to tell me in your learning portfolio which learning contract you want to receive full score. Okay? Do you understand what I mean? In the learning contract, you know the score you earn for learning contract one, and you will know the score you earn in learning contract two and three by the end of this week. And then you calculate your score earned in your learning portfolio, and you tell me which learning contract you want to receive full score. Okay? In other words, you will have full ten points. Okay? No matter what your actual point earned for that learning contract. Do you understand what I mean? Do you read me? Okay? So this is a very strict no secret. And I'm glad that some of you did discuss with uh, some students in the last semester. This is what we did, alright? And not only I will tell you this in the very last class of the semester, but since you raised the point, I'm going to tell you straight today. Okay? It's just one little way from our last class. It's okay. Alright? So you can have a better calculations of your scores earned in a semester. Now you should definitely earn the 20 semester points for your in-class sharing. For your in-class sharing, your 20 semester points, you definitely have to earn this. I do not believe you need to lose any of those 20 points. You did it already. And then the second part is your learn to learn score. Remember that it's 15 semester form. It's based on your five journals produced, which you can earn five points, and the five rocks produced from each of the five journals. You can earn two points each, so it's 10 points added to five points. You should have 15 semester points. Now, when you add the 15 semester points to the 20 semester points, you, are, you should have already earned in your e class sharing, you got 35 points already. Now, if you take that 35 points and add 10 points there, you have 45 points already. So, every one of you should have already got 45 points as your cushions, foundation points. And then, how many points are you going to earn in the two other learning contracts of 20? And uh, once you did the speech of the semester here, you're going to earn some points out of the 15 points. So with another 35 points, I hopefully you can take away from it. So 45 points plus 35 points, it's already 80 points, right? So the remaining 20 points is what you have to do in your learning portfolios. So now I think it's a very attractive um, semester score for each one of you. Now make sure you get your learning portfolio done before December the 5th. Hopefully the last day you set is December the 4th because December the 5th is actually the first day for your final exam. I hate to bother you with your final exam. Okay? So, have you, you got it? It's wonderful. Alright, so let's take attendance for the day. Rex, not here today. Okay, Fiora, yes. Uh, Ruji, uh, a secret, yes. Terry, yes. Uh, Neo, yes. KO, KO, yes. The CO, CO is not here today. And then Adrian, thank you. Vicky, not here today. Aris, thank you. And then Naomi, you're here. Rajon, you're not here today. Haizai, you're not here today. Okay, and then Naomi, you're here today. Scofield, you're not here today too. Rina, you're here. Selena, you're here. And then Addison, you're not here today. Rita, you're here. Thank you. Karen, you're here. Boss, you're not here. Andre, you're here. Tiffany, you're here. Thank you. And so we save the first page.
Aunt Teresa, you're here. Cindy, Cindy, you're not here. Reggie, you're here. Alice, you're here. And then Will, you're here. Thank you very much. So we met some of the students today. Two of, two of them are supposed to be the speakers for today. So with today's information, you know that you don't have a lot of points to lose in this semester. Actually, you don't need to lose a lot of points. So there is no reason why you cannot make a good grade. All right? So dash forward. All right? Dash forward. So if you go back to the semester here, uh, you can see that I've already given you back almost all the videos of the past two weeks. Um, we, I'm going to upload a video for today on week number 14, as you can see here. So when you compile your learning portfolio, particularly in the area of in-class sharing, you have all the videos you need except for one day. That's the day when my camera did not work. You can just put it over there. It's the day when we do not have the video record, but we have the sign-up and presentations record in the forum. So, now this is something I want to bring to your attention, okay? This is from day number 23, particularly when you are going to learn something on Google Site, how can you use the Google Site for your chart resource to build up your e-portfolio. You learn something called Wiki in the Google environment. You can extend your knowledge here to the Google Site again in another Wiki environment, but it's much more professional. And of course, uh, at the school and University of Macau, in particular, at your RC, we have the Mahara system, okay? And if you want to know the important technique on building portfolios on the Google site, day number 23, an excellent resource for you. And after that day, number 24 is basically a very good educational tutorial giving you the ideas of e-portfolio for learning from Dr. Helen Barat. And this is a very good teacher, okay? She retired already, oh, close to 80 years old, I guess, but she did a lot of wonderful resources free of charge on the web on those very useful issues. And I, I, I love to keep, to make sure that you got access to reading some of Dr. Barrett's resources here. And any of such things will be much, much more useful to your subsequent study in your college year. Again, okay? it's a very good, uh, a page resource for you to do follow up. And then if we go back to week number 13, uh, the ideas of digital storytelling is very important. The idea of digital storytelling is, uh, although we did not ask to do it specifically for this semester, normally it's offered as a bonus work in this course. It is how you record your voice narrations over your PowerPoint and turn this into a digital video file so that you're going to hand your video file to anybody uh, and people can read your presentations with your face, with a PowerPoint, automatically <coughs> so that people could read your presentation, say, in the five minutes story of ten minutes story. This is something very important for you to know in order to produce your own PowerPoint. Okay, and again here uh, at the school, we do have a WordPress um, system. Uh, according to the ICTO people, each student will be given a WordPress account so you can keep your rock on the school website uh, sustainable uh, until even after your graduation. Now, but I do not know if they have already honored their uh, the province. If it is indeed available, you can check it with the ICTO people where you can have your WordPress account to start rocking using the WordPress site. All right? So, so here I provide an important tutorial on how you can create actually your blog and e-portfolio on this platform called WordPress. Um, some of the school website, the University of Macau website, are produced in a platform WordPress. 
And according to the ideas I had about two or three years ago, they said that each student, each teacher, will be given a personal account to use the WordPress site and the universal account. But I do not know if they have already released it to the individual student yet. But Mahara, indeed, it's already released because you have to use it in the house C. So day number 25 will give you this important resources. Now remember, these are very important resources for you to pick up when you want to learn something more. And of course, uh, since we're talking about portfolio, so you might want to get in touch with some of the portfolio contacts at the other university. And one of these is, uh, let me see if I can give this to you. Trust University. Yeah. Hello. I want to do this quick introduction to ePortfolios. Just four minutes. What do all these people have in common? Well, they're actually all famous for keeping diaries. They are, of course, Captain Kirk, who kept the captain's mom on the Starship Enterprise. Adrian Mole wrote a series of teenage diaries. Samuel Pepys, Anne Frank, and of course, Bridget Jones. Who is this man? Well, if you don't recognise him, don't worry, it's not unusual. He is actually William Spears Bruce, and he was the first person to carry out an expedition to the Antarctic Circle, and set up the first weather station on the Antarctic Circle. But not many people have ever heard of him, because he never kept a log of his, of his adventures. Therefore, he was lost in the pages of history. But what does this all got to do with e-portfolios? Well, an e-portfolio, according to Wikipedia, is a diary that you keep online to record evidence about yourself and your experiences. Keeping it on online enables it to be accessed worldwide and also be managed in very dynamic ways. Now, some people might say, I can't keep a diary, I've got nothing to write about. That's not true. You can build up evidence of many things. Let's take the example of team working skills. You can build up evidence of working in teams in the workplace where you could be working together with colleagues. You may go to a workshop where you can find out about team working skills. Or if you have a group project that you have to do as part of your academic course, once again, you can build up evidence of how you've worked well together as a team. But why would you do this? Well, over a period of time, you'll build up a whole body of evidence of different skills, including IT skills, networking skills, team working skills, or even work experience. And then someday, you may be asked the question in a job application or in an interview, what experience do you have of working in teams? Well, by recording the information like this, you don't have to think of fresh evidence, because over time, you've recorded a whole body of experiences. But it is not just a diary. It's important to use your e-portfolio to reflect and think about what you did in that experience that you did well, but what also you could have done better. And then by thinking in this way and putting it into practice, next time you write your diary entry, think about the progression you've made. The best tool for the job to keep an e-portfolio is actually a blog. And the service we use is something called WordPress.com. The reason we use WordPress is because it has several features that make it compatible with being in the portfolio. It enables you to post evidence chronologically, like a diary, but it also enables you to tag your piece of evidence so that it can be grouped together into similar themes. Because it's online, it can be shared with anybody, including the employers, but also you can use it for private reflection. And what we mean by this is, over a period of time, you'll build up a whole body of evidence to do with different things. But some of the things you write may be quite personal, and you may want, not want to share these with the general public. Therefore, you can keep these posts private, so only you can access them. But, as a word of caution, anything that you do pu publicly release can be accessed by anybody. Therefore, be careful not to ever put any secure details into your blog posts including your telephone number, address, or anything that anybody could use to access secure information about you. To see some examples of 
WordPress blogs, you can go to this address where you can see my WordPress blog, or there is further support available online. Also in this module, there is a guide which you can download to teach you how to set up your own WordPress ePortfolio. Happy blogging! So you see that this is a very soft introduction to help you make the best use of the simple WordPress. Let's listen to the question sounds later. So today I just want to remind you in this course what you need to learn to construct your e-portfolio on Budo, it's the wiki. And in the wiki, what you need to manage in order to create pages to simulate the URL for your portfolio is to put the name of your name page within two set of square brackets. Save it, you've got a link and you see the steps. And where you're going to create a link of your portfolio, starting from week number 11 to week number 15, you've got this specific link here called personal e-portfolio space for week 11 to 15. You click on this particular link, choose the one with your name on it because it's your personal portfolio. You do not choose the one with your pair name, you do not choose the one with the key name. Again, you choose the one with your own name. And start building up your portfolio. Remember, I've given you an example of what we call an excellent portfolio last week. Okay? And this week, this is very important. That's the very last week of the semester. You can see that uh, beside the portfolio stuff on Number 13, we've given you some very important resources to help you learn with the use of the internet. Okay, you can see that we have a lot of things called the open learning initiatives. Okay, in the internet, uh, open thinking academy in the internet, open learning exchange in the internet, and there's one guy I want you to be aware of is this guy with the name George Simmons. Okay, is the guy promoting ideas of connectivism to learn through making connections. Okay, this is a very interesting phenomenon today. Okay, this is very much connected with the concept of portfolio. Suppose you create your own portfolio, and people, everybody create his or her own portfolio, and you can connect with people who have opened up his or her own portfolio with a particular expertise. You will become persons creating something called personal learning network. And your personal learning network is basically a lot of links to a lot of other people who have different expertise and they're making the expertise available for you and for your fellow students. And so if each one of you has a personal learning network, PLN, a group of you in the group work will have clusters of personal learning network and that is how we solve problems, okay? So um, I would say that um, you can particularly um, study those important things in day number 27, which is today, and try to open up yourself to the world of learning, okay? In today's world, we don't just learn inside the classroom. We learn with the tools we have, which is the internet, web, and then how are we going to learn through that? Connectivism, socializing is open learning. That means you can really learn everything through the internet. And if you belong to that kind of traditional students who need to attend a classroom to learn, well, I can give you another important source uh, in the context of today's um, open learning initiative, uh, particularly advocated by the Stanford <coughs> University. Uh, together with a specific organization called Coursera. They have created hundreds of courses, uh, which is actually free of charge online, waiting for you to register. And each such course range from one week, two week to 14 weeks a day. Uh, you don't need to pay in order to learn or use the resources there, but if you want credentials from it, they now have a way for you to say, Okay, you don't just learn free of charge from us. If you want us to authenticate it, you know something after you have paid the school fees and finished your expected homework, 
the professors to give you comments and then they will give you credentials that you complete a course with a certain grade, which is very much equivalent to earning credit from the university. And in today's world, as long as you know these resources to learn something for your own by picking your own topics, course error is an important source. For those of you who do not know what it is, this is it. Okay, this is the website. Because there are online courses from top university, John for free. You can actually have a lot of courses to choose, over 1,000 courses from school, life, Stanford, and Yale, all around the world. You can learn any courses as you want, you can join for free, select any courses of your personal interest, and you can actually, you don't need to come to the university to study, but the advantage of coming to the university to study today is you have the university who's going to recognize that you spend time here, so you graduate here, we'll give you the credentials, but if your own interest is to learn something, you can actually come here and learn it. You have all the videos of the of the instructor telling you. You have all the student group, the student John, with other students from around the world who are coming to a particular course, and you can have all those kind of discussions online anytime you want. It's very exciting in today's work. Coming back to the classroom to learn, it's just a kind of format we cannot get away with Dow as a university. But coming to the class to learn, we must open up the game for you to extend your learning to the world of learning today. Okay? So, I'm so glad that I, I could have this opportunity and this GE course to introduce to you all of these resources. And um, so don't be frightened by those resources that I put on every week in a two days class. And I give it you a lot of resources in order to help you open up your mind. And for this very last day of the, I guess, um, this first day, you can see that I put in something back to time management, which I start helping you understand. Now you have one semester's time doing this course with this coursework. Think back on your management of time with a specific rule called 8020 rule. How do you manage your time? And when you manage your time, you nonetheless might have some stress. And how do you reduce stress and increase your happiness in learning? Those are things that you need to understand together with the critical thinking you developed in the semester. Uh, it's a lot of very interesting stuff. All right? So we're going to have one more day, most likely next week. Okay? So um, I'll give you. Week number 15's resources. This is what we call a set of presents. All right. So I think I'm going to stop here today here, just to make sure that you know you have some time to think back, and you should be busy doing with your learning portfolio at this point. So allow me to remind those of you who are ready to make the speech of the semester by this first day. Upload your PowerPoint. All right. So that's it for today. CISD 114. Section one of date number 27, week number 14.